Hello there, future fellow pilgrims. It's my turn to do a YouTube packing list video. I watched a lot of those. It was kind of part of the anticipation of going on the Camino. You're so excited to do it, and yet it's two months out. What do you do? You watch packing list videos to really narrow down what you're going to take. It's actually one of the essential things to do. A little work before you leave really pays off in the long run. You don't want to take too little, but most of all, you don't want to take too much. Take less than you think you should. If there's something you're missing, you can always buy it there. And there's shops, there's larger cities that you hit every couple of days. It's really not a problem. It's Spain, it's a civilized country. You can get anything you need. This little video is just a guide. My idea of what I would take and what I did take. Um, you might have a different idea. Let me know in the comments uh, if I forgot something or if you think uh, it's too much still. At the end of the video, I will also mention the items that I could still leave out. Although this is the just right packing list, I think it could be optimized even more. Let's first dive into what I will be taking. First of all, the backpack. That's of course one of the two most important items. To tell you the truth, I would not watch YouTube for backpack reviews because there's no point. You have to go to a store, you need a professional to show you what backpack fits your body because everybody is a little different and I'm quite tall so the Ospreys just wouldn't fit me. You know, I have a long back but I need a professional to, to show me uh, what would fit better. So I really advise to go to a store, try them on, try them on with weights. Don't rely on a good YouTube review because it might not fit your body even if for the reviewer it might fit very well but it might not be the case for you. So I got a 35 liter backpack by Fjell Raven. Um, it worked really well, and um, but there are other backpacks that work really well. I think what's more important is the size, and my backpack is a 35 liter one. I think that's kind of the sweet spot. You can fit what you need, but you don't carry extra weight with you, and it also forces a little bit of discipline on you. As I say, 10% of your body weight. My backpack weighed uh, 8.5 kilos, so you do the math. I wouldn't get a water bladder for your backpack. Some backpacks offer that. And my experience is people who had it um, weren't extremely happy with it. It's kind of cumbersome. You have to take off your backpack to recharge it. It gets kind of gooey on the inside after a while, and it's just not as practical as it seems to be. I would just get a water bottle, plastic water bottle for a euro in a store and that's it. You know, one preferably with, you know, a drinking thingy so you can quickly take it from the outside of your backpack, chuck it and uh, put it back. Next up, the shoes, of course, and it's the same thing. Go to a store because your feet are your most important thing on the Camino. They will carry you to Santiago and further and um, you want to take good care of them and you can't buy shoes for a thousand kilometer trek on the internet. Theoretically you can, but you need to try them on first and also you need a professional to show you what really fits. For me it was really interesting, I went to a long distance running store in Berlin, it's actually called Long Distance and um, I said, hey guys, I want to walk the Camino, what do you got? And uh, first of all they said, why are your shoes too small, the ones I was wearing? And um, I realized that my daily shoes are just way too small. So the, the shoes they recommended for me were three sizes larger than my usual shoes. And um, that was just the right call. And they tried, they, they gave me three pairs of different sneakers or uh, trail running shoes in, in this case. And we tried them on and I spent an hour and a half there. And um, I was really happy to get professional advice because as a layman, you just don't know. You know, and uh, you can't research the stuff from the internet either. You can't read about shoes. You know, every foot is its own sort of design and you want to get the right shoes because you will need feet that are happy. And um, there's a debate about whether to take trail running shoes or, you know, hiking boots. My advice is really go for the trail runners because they're super comfortable, they're airy, and because they, they can breathe, it also means that you will not get blisters or you're less likely to get blisters because blisters come from friction and water in, in your shoes. So those trail runners are much less likely to, to have that problem. 
Also, I would advise against Gore-Tex shoes because when it rains, it keeps the water out, but it also will not let the water out once it's in there. So, you know, if you get wet, you get wet. What are you going to do? In general, the people I've met who had trail runners were quite happy with them. And uh, in my case, I had hokas. And uh, the picture you see, that's after one Camino. So, I mean, they look in pretty good shape after almost a thousand kilometers. I used them again on my second Camino and they worked fine. So, you know, it's uh, good shoes do make the difference. You also want to get some sandals or flip-flops. Um, I got these pool sliders. They're very nice, they're very comfortable. It's like walking on air a little bit. Uh, the disadvantage is they're a bit bulky and um, they kind of take up a lot of space in the backpack. It's kind of a luxury to have them, but you do want shoes to walk around in when you're at your destination. Next up is a waist bag or fanny pack, or like my Irish friend said, a bum bag. Um, you need a bag that's easily accessible so you don't have to take off your backpack, you know, when you want to get out your credentials or your camera or whatever, your money, your cookies. Um, so it's one thing I actually changed from last year because on my first Camino I had a small waste bag and it was a bit too small. It was like one liter and a half or something. This year I got a larger one, a five liter one. And in the beginning I thought maybe that's a bit large, but I was very happy to have five liters extra storage right in front of me. I highly recommend a day pack. It's basically a small, tiny backpack that folds up really, really small. It weighs nothing and it allows you to go shopping when you're in the village with your albergue. You can just take the, your day pack with you. It's very convenient when, for instance, it's a very rainy day and you want to use Camino Logistics to have your backpack sent ahead of you to the next destination to keep your, your backpack dry. Sometimes that's a good idea or because it's too heavy, whatever. You can just take your day pack. The most important items, you just throw them in there. Whether you're taking a sleeping bag, it really depends on whether you're staying in albergues or hostels. If you're mostly staying in albergues, I would definitely take one because it will be sort of a bed away from home. It's your own little thing, it's, it's cozy. And also, of course, it's warmer because you don't know how cold it's gonna be. May and June can still get chilly at night, especially up in the mountains or, you know, even the first night in Roncesvalles, um, it's an old monastery. So I took it, I didn't use it much because this year, actually, I stayed mostly in hostels where I shared, you know, a room with three or four friends and they just had regular beds. So I was happy to have it, but you could also probably just make do with a liner or two. Just take two small liners and um, if you use hostels or Airbnbs a lot, you're fine. You know, I mean, on my next Camino, I might not take the sleeping bag, but as always, it's a good option to have. And mine is a down one, not polyester. They pack smaller. I brought a sleeping bag liner as well. Very good to have. You will need it. It weighs nothing. I took one that's made of silk, so it feels kind of nice. I'll get two and then skip the sleeping bag. That's also an idea. Next, you're gonna need a wash bag for your toiletries. I got a sports one by Deuter. You know, they make these uh, backpacks as well. The nice thing about it is it's very light and this is perfectly fine. It's solid. You can just wash it out if you need to and um, it fits everything I need. So, you know, why not? As to toiletries, I recommend the Dr. Bronner soap, liquid soap, 60 milliliter. It's tiny, but it's highly concentrated. It will last you throughout the entire Camino. You can wash your hair with it. You can wash your body. You can even wash your laundry with it. Um, it smells really good. It's organic. It's very popular too. And really one of those small bottles is enough. Don't take a regular towel because they're made of cotton and it won't dry fast enough. Get a microfiber towel at Decathlon or something and get 
one that's large enough. You don't want a small towel. You want a real regular sized towel. They pack very small. It dries really quickly. Needless to say, don't forget your sunscreen. Get a good quality one. You're going to need it every day, unless it's raining, but you're going to need it and um, get the good stuff and maybe even get 50 plus because you're outside for most of the day and the sun is going to hit you. So you'll be happy to have really good sunscreen. It's definitely worth it. It's your skin. You want to keep it good, um, get the good sunscreen. My piece of advice here. There are so many discussions about blisters and how to avoid them, of course, because they can really spoil the fun of it. So um, I put Vaseline all over my feet every morning. I read that somewhere and it really helps. I basically don't get blisters. Um, it's a bit counterintuitive to put Vaseline all over your feet, especially on the, the parts that seem to rub, but it really helps. So, you know, Vaseline is a secret, simple ingredient um, of your backpack that will really help you out. In my case, I got Hirschteig. It's a, it's a German product. Uh, I'm not sure if you can get it everywhere. It's similar. It's also organic or something. And, um, but Vaseline will do the trick. Just use it every day before you put on your socks in your comfy shoes. And I think your feet will be fine. You will need earplugs. Those albergues can sometimes be a snorkestra. There will be two or three people at least snoring so loud that, you know, falling asleep will be hard. So get the ones that are made of silicone and that really adapt to your ear. They work really well. Um, yeah. Or you can just avoid the snorkestra and use a hostel or an Airbnb. You know, if you're a group of friends, that's what we did a lot. I had competes with me. They are good for treating blisters, but thankfully I didn't need them, but you know, I carried them with me anyway, and maybe someone would need them, but nobody did. I found out that my body really profits from magnesium and potassium supplements because it uses a lot of it every day. It's Northern Spain, it's springtime, so it can get chilly. You will need a fleece jacket. Have one that you can take off easily so with a zipper preferably that really makes a difference um you'll be happy to have it also if you leave early in the morning and it's still chilly you will need that that fleece jacket you also need a rain jacket because like i said it's northern spain it does rain not often but it happens and um, a rain jacket doesn't insulate you from the rain but it helps a lot and also sometimes when it's windy it will keep the wind out and I really recommend uh, getting a high quality one. They're not cheap. Mine is a Patagonia. And as you know, Patagonia is high quality and not cheap, but uh, it packs really small. It's high quality stuff. It's dry. It's, um, you know, um, get what you want, but get a good one. Don't, don't cheap out on the rain jacket because when you need it, you really need it. What you see in the bottom left are gaiters. They will keep water from getting into your shoes when it's raining. I didn't have them the first time around and I would have needed them. I had them with me the second time around and I didn't need them. So it's one of those things you really don't know. It's the irony of walking the Camino is that there's always something you took with you that you didn't need and vice versa. So not sure I would take them again but it probably rain really hard if I don't, so maybe I'll take them again. I brought two pairs of hiking pants, one convertible that you can shorten into hiking shorts, and one rain pant. You want rain pants because it does rain, and they will really make the burden of a hard rainfall much easier, so definitely get a pair of rain pants. And what they also do, they look a little less like hiking pants. So I actually wore them, you know, when I was in Leon or something, they look more like regular pants in a way because they're a little more chic. And of course, two pairs of hiking shorts. Those are the ones I use the most because most of the time the weather's good. And even if it isn't, you can still wear shorts. Um, yes, they weren't even hiking shorts per se, but sports shorts. They're made for movement. That's what you need and you, want them with a pocket so you can put stuff in there.
On my first Camino, I had a mix of synthetic and merino wool. And although merino wool feels nice, synthetic does too. I really don't think there's much of a difference. And synthetic has a huge advantage. It dries much faster. That's both for when you're wearing it and also when you're drying it. You don't want to watch laundry dry when you're, you know, arrived at your destination. So I went full synthetic this year. So throughout my entire laundry list here, um, it will always be synthetic. So I had um, three synthetic t-shirts, one of them long sleeve. It's good for either cold or the punishing sun. Three pairs of synthetic underwear and three pairs of synthetic socks. They're these hiking socks that sort of compress your feet a little bit. I'm not sure what they do, but they really work really well. You know, they were comfy, I had no blisters, they, they dry fast. You really want stuff that dries fast. You need a hat, obviously. Last year I had one of those big Camino pilgrim hats. I always thought the style was a little dubious, so I didn't wear it much. Um, this year I just took, you know, another hat, like a cap. Anything will do. The sun will hit you, so you're going to be happy to have a hat of some sort. I took a buff both times. You can wear it in various ways, on your head, on your on your neck. Um, it's a nice thing to have, but honestly, I didn't end up using it much. You're going to need a small plastic bag of little things, you know, like sunscreen and, you know, little items that otherwise get thrown around in your backpack. So just get a little bag of, you know, zip something that you can throw those things in so you always know where they are. Keep it a little orderly because it's chaotic enough sometimes when you arrive at the destination, you know, you want your stuff to be in the right place. Doing the Camino without a smartphone is a nice idea, philosophically, but I don't think it's entirely realistic because you will not be able to book. You will not see a map. You don't have that little flashlight. You know, I mean, we all know those things are very versatile. So just take it, get over it. <laughs> You'll have your smartphone with you. Also, very important, you will want music, especially on those long stretches in the Meseta. You want music or podcasts, because, you know, it's many hours of nothingness and it's great to, you know, really dive into the music. I recommend getting in-ear headphones because you don't want those big over-ear headphones. They're always in the way, they take up a lot of space and they're just, you know, so much technology with you. USB charger. I got a charger that has two outlets, which is very convenient if you want to charge your phone and your power bank, for instance or your phone and a friend's phone and only use one outlet. It's also one of those chargers that charges fast and is very small and lightweight. So I actually really recommend this one. And another little thing, um, I saw a lot of my American friends and UK friends bring big bulky adapters to either convert the currency or to convert the plug. I would say just take the cable and buy a USB charger when you're in Spain. That way you can keep it small and you don't need the big bulky converters that also slow it down and they slow you down because they're heavy. And I would just leave that stuff at home. It's USB, it's a world standard. You can get that stuff anywhere, really. I just saved you another few ounces of weight. Leave a like for that. Sunglasses, of course, you will need sunglasses because it's sunny, it's Spain, you'll need them, get good ones. The first time around I had a little flashlight and I didn't use it. The second time around um, I didn't take it with me, but I would have really needed it because I did a very long night walk all through the night. Very exciting story. Um, it will be the subject of one of my videos soon. Um, it was a long one. But uh, I was walking through dark forests in the middle of the night and it was pitch black. And I wish I had had a little flashlight. They don't weigh a lot, they're tiny. There's really no reason not to, to take one with you. 
On the other hand, most of the time, the flashlight on your phone will suffice. But, you know, if you plan on doing any sort of uh, off-track night walking or something, make sure you have a flashlight with you. I took a power bank with me because I use my camera a lot. Even though I could get through the day very often, sometimes I didn't on one charge. So if you have a power bank, that will actually, you know, help you out. The, the power bank will really give you more options. And sometimes you can just charge your phone once you arrive with your power bank, so you don't have to wait on anything. I think it's a, it's a good thing to take. I had a 10,000 milliampere hours one that will charge your phone once or twice. Um, you can get one with 5,000, it's a little smaller. I would go for the 10,000 because, you know, it will hold a lot of charge. And uh, in a pinch, it's really helpful. Also maybe for a friend who needs a charge. I recommend getting an electronics bag to get all your chargers and cables and lamps or whatever you're taking. That way you always know where to find it and it stays in order. Of course, you will have your little rock with you or little stone. I brought mine from Germany, but you can also, of course get it in Saint-Jean or wherever you're starting your Camino. You will deposit it at the Iron Cross later and part of the point is that you're carrying this rock with you. So make sure it's not tiny. You want it to weigh a little bit, but you don't want it to be too heavy either. And both times I found a, a little rock that had the symbolic value for me, you know, of, about where I found it and that kind of thing. So, you know, if you still have time, look out for a rock that kind of speaks to you and then that you can then deposit at the Iron Cross. I have two rocks sitting there now. I hope they're friends. I got the pilgrim shell, that little white thingy, um, back at the pilgrim's office in Saint-Jean-Pied-de-Port, my first Camino, and I took it with me again on the second one. So don't worry about it, you will get it there. I brought a journal with me because I like to keep track of what happened, what I was thinking, um, also put the credential stamps in there, just because it makes it visually interesting. Um, it's a good thing to do. You may want to do it, you may not. Um, I always thought there was a lot to process at the end of the day, so I think it's worth carrying that extra little book with you. I didn't bring walking sticks this time around, because first of all, you can buy them when you're there. You arrive in Saint-Jean and there's like two or three stores that sell walking sticks because, you know, it's not really a high-tech item. You just go and you buy it. If you come by plane, they're difficult to take with you. They will take them off you if, if you try to take them on board, so that's not a good idea. And also, it's just kind of a bulky item to, to carry with you on, on trains. Just buy it in Saint-Jean, it's fine. And the question whether you need a walking stick at all is a different question. Um, I have different experiences with it. Um, I will talk about it in one of my videos too, because I actually went walking stick free eventually because I wanted to have my hands available for photos and stuff. Just to compare, this is what I took last year. That was my first Camino. And uh, just like you right now, I did a lot of research. And I have to say these YouTube movies that other pilgrims did really help me narrow down what I needed. Even on the first Camino, I had my backpack pretty down pat. I mean, it was almost the same things I took this year. So I didn't bring a scrubber this time around, the, the washing thing for your laundry. You don't need it. You can do that in, you know, a sink or if you're in an uh, Airbnb, there's usually a washing machine or in a hostel, you know, so just less, less is more. That's the motto. As to the things I could leave out, I might leave out the convertible hiking pants because if you have two pairs of shorts and one pair of rain pants, you're basically covered because if the sun is shining, even if it's cold in the morning, you can wear shorts. Or if it's too cold, you just wear your rain pants. So the convertible hiking pants 
are actually a little bulky and they, they also have a weight that's not totally inconsiderable. So I actually think they could be on the list to not come with me another time. I brought a gimbal to make my video a little more steady. But to be honest, it was always a bit cumbersome to, to get that thing out of the bum bag and I don't know, just keep it simple. You don't really need a gimbal if you do a video. The stabilization systems and smartphones are good enough. I didn't have a first aid kit nor a sewing kit because when are you going to need it? I don't know. And if you really do, there's always someone who's going to have one. So you will be fine. It's a Camino. Don't worry about it. My advice for this entire video or for this list, don't overthink it. I had friends there who basically decided two weeks before they would do the Camino. They would just do it. They came with, you know, a backpack, two t-shirts, and that was it. Hey, Evan. <laughs> Whatever you're packing, you can probably pack less. You'll find that you will need less than you think you do. Keep it light, keep it easy, and you'll have a fine Camino. So we're nearing the end of this Camino video, and I hope that by now you get a sense of what the essentials could be. Of course, I suggest you also watch other people's videos because, you know, many people have many good ideas. And uh, for me, what really worked was to get a distillation of many different packing lists and um, to see what works for me and it really helped me and which is also the reason why I'm doing this video here. So but I think with this packing list uh, you should be fine for a very nice Camino in the springtime. And it may seem daunting at first to pack for an 800 kilometer 500 mile trek but just remember to keep your packing streamlined and you'll be fine. Get get a pack in the 35 liter range, and you'll be good. And you know, focus on versatile layered uh, clothing and good footwear to stay organized with packing cubes and little zipper bags. And those really help out to keep your backpack organized. The Camino has a way of teaching us to let go of material things and to enjoy simple living. And that's really one of the main learnings on uh, the Camino, I think. So you might as well start while you're packing. It's been walked for thousands of years and things will just fall into place. Just start walking, that's the most important thing. If you have two feet, you can walk it, I promise. So I hope these packing tips help you feel prepared. But remember the Camino provides what you need when you need it. Just trust the process, trust life. Trust the Camino, it will all work out. The most important thing is to walk the Camino at your own pace and let the Camino work its magic. Many have done so before and will probably be the same for you. So, buen Camino and see you on the trail. <laughs>